Folks, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. You know, I feel like sometimes I miss something obvious, a big article, something that was a huge thread on some forum, but I was asked recently by several different folks in a, in a relatively short amount of time on if a tiller could handle tilling a certain amount of acreage, right? Whether that was 20 acres or two acres or doing a really long driveway that they wanted to install. And just kind of these, I don't know why I was getting a similar type of question on, on how long is a tiller gonna last? And I guess my response to that was really, well, it depends how long you wanna be sitting on your tractor for that project, right? Because, well, in my mind, it, the tiller doesn't care, right? And it's more of a question that I immediately go to of, well, do you have the time to sit on your tractor for that long to till 20 acres, for example, because if you've got a small little tractor like this guy over here with a four foot tiller, that's gonna take an absolute eternity to till that up. All that said, if you're doing 20 acres, even with a tiller on a guy like this bigger Kubota right here, it's still gonna take you an eternity. But, you know, folks have used tillers for their whole life, right? They've, they've had them for 30, 40, 50 years. As long as you're changing the gear oil, uh, you'll replace tines that are on there, for example, all those tines are bolted on. So if you break one or snap one off or wear it down or wear them all down and you want to do a complete rehab, you can do that. Even if you have a chain drive tiller, you know, those, you can still get replacement chains. The point being is that you can rebuild a tiller if you need to. And tillers are designed to be worked in rough and tough applications, you know, rocks, roots, other things that are just popping up that are hidden in the soil it may not be ideal for it, but the point is it can get through it. It's made to work in just nasty conditions. And that's all it's made to do is just work the ground. It doesn't care what size project you have going on. Again, if you were maybe using it 40 hours a week, year round, you're gonna wear through it a lot quicker on those tines and, and uh, maybe the chain has to be replaced and the, the gear oil changing that out, that kind of thing, the servicing, the greasing, whatnot. But a tiller's gonna last you, like most of this equipment that we sell these days, for a really, really long time. So anyway, I went down a rabbit hole because again, I, I keep coming back to that 20 acres of tilling because that's just a monumental effort. Um, not having tilled 20 acres at one time, but just tilling an acre or two. So I, I can't imagine the, the amount of time it would take. And, and so I started doing some math and running some numbers and we're gonna use the tilling for an example, but you can do the same kind of calculation with pretty much any tool that you have. Now for tilling, it really doesn't matter if you're on the big Kubota, the TX25, the 1025, you're going slow. It is not a speed game at all. You need to go, you know, typically one to two miles an hour, somewhere in that range to have effective results. Whereas with other tools, maybe if you're, you know, plowing snow, pushing snow, you could go faster. If you're brush hogging, you could go faster. There's still certain speed ranges you want to stay in. And maybe a bigger tractor is going to be able to allow you to go faster compared to a smaller one. Or even something, I guess, like that Colt Packer that's on the back of this Kubota. You know, with a cold packer, you, you can just kind of cruise along, right? So, you know, if you have a, a higher top end speed, I guess, on the Kubota, you know, you can go faster and get the job done quicker because of the speed, not just the width of the attachment. Alrighty, so I did the calculations. I got it written down here. I want you guys to take a guess. How much faster with a tiller, okay? Doing a 48 inch tiller. These are based on things that I sell. So a 48 inch tiller, taking care of an acre of ground, just one pass compared to an 84 inch or a four foot versus a seven foot tiller. Okay, I, that's kind of the size range that I sell, four foot, five foot, six foot, seven. So how much faster can you till an acre with one pass with a seven foot tiller compared to a four foot tiller? Well, I'll let you know here in just a minute. I'm gonna give you the parameters because you gotta take into consideration a few factors, all right? So, all right, we're gonna treat this like a, uh, a square acre, all right? 208 foot by 208 foot. Um, we're gonna count on two inches of overlap because nobody's perfect. Okay, as good of an operator as you are, nobody's perfect to, to not have any overlap. So we're gonna count two inches of overlap there. We're gonna do one mile per hour, all right, which is basically one and a half feet per second that you're tilling. So you're tilling along, you're working up one and a half feet per second as you're going along, all right? Now, on a second pass or a third pass or whatever, if it's um, easy ground, you could go a little bit faster, no doubt, but we're just keeping things on a level playing field right now. Okay, okay, before I get to this really quick, I think uh, for you folks that are out there wanting to, to add on a side business, right, of doing some tractor work, this is a very important calculation because it'll help you determine how much time it's gonna take you to till. And if you can justify going with a, a bigger tiller, you know, if you have the right size equipment to get the job done versus a smaller tiller because time is money, right? So, okay, here we go. The 48 inch tiller, here's the parameters. Two inch overlap, 208 foot down, 
one mile an hour. For that 48 inch tiller, it's gonna take 139 seconds to do one pass down, 208 foot. You have 54 passes, all right, to cover that whole acre. Now we're gonna say 10 seconds to turn around at the end and get lined up and come back the other way. So 10 seconds to kind of rearrange and get back down, times those 54 passes. So the total time to till that acre with one pass with a 48 inch tiller is two hours, 14 minutes, okay? All right, so here we go, 60 inch tiller. Same thing, two inches of overlap, same speed. All the other variables are the same, all right? You've got 43 passes. We're gonna add on the extra 10 seconds per turn. Comes up with an hour and 47 minutes, all right? So we were at two hours and 14 minutes. Going up a foot in width of your tiller gets it down to an hour and 47 minutes. All right, 72 inch tiller. Same thing, two inches of overlap, one mile an hour. All that kind of good stuff. You're down to 36 passes, all right? So add in your turn time, which the turn time is shorter as well, right? If you have fewer passes, that's fewer turns, okay? So our total time to accomplish this is an hour and 29 minutes, okay? So we went from two hours and 14 minutes down to an hour and 47 minutes down to an hour and 29. So now for the big guy, the seven foot or the 84 inch tiller, all right? So we've taken it down to 31 passes, plus again, shrinking overall turn time as well, gets us down to an hour and 16 minutes, all right? So an hour and 16 minutes, if everything goes well, for the seven foot tiller compared to two hours and 14 minutes. So you're basically saving an hour going with a seven foot tiller compared to a four foot. Okay, so I'm not a mathematician, all right, but uh, Chris and I were just trying to do a little bit of simple math to, to put it percentage wise in the, um, the, I guess the efficiency gain when you go up in size. And so the biggest efficiency gain is when you go from four foot to five foot. You gain about 20% in time, all right? And then when you go to uh, the five foot to the six foot, I think it was around 14% or something like that. Um, so you go from a 20% gain to a 14% gain. And then when you go from six foot to seven foot, you gain another 10%. So that efficiency gain starts to, starts to dwindle, and I guess if you could go 9, 10, 11, 12 foot, all that kind of stuff, you would see those improvements shrink down a little bit as well. Um, but overall, you can see there that it makes a big difference, and you can't handle a larger tool on every tractor, but if you are looking for a new tractor, or maybe you're in one of those tweener sizes that can handle one or the other, this could help move you in the well, in a certain direction, right? And I don't know if this makes any sense, but you know, imagine you've got that four foot tiller, right? So you add a fifth, well, that's a, a pretty big increase to what you had to start with. But if you have a nine foot tiller, let's say that, and you add a 10th, like a 10th foot, well, you're not making as big of a difference, right? So that, that percentage and efficiency gained starts to dwindle off a little bit. And I think this is most important for those of you that are doing larger projects, right? And, um, or doing it for, for business, for money, you know, because again, the time is the money. So if you pay a little bit more to get a one foot bigger size tool, that's gonna have a really quick payback. However, there's nothing worse than getting a tool that's too big for your tractor. So, you know, there's, there's times when you want to, as much as you can, try to justify getting a bigger tiller, getting a bigger brush hog, getting a bigger snow pusher, getting a bigger uh, set of pallet forks, wherever the heck it is, but more often than not, if, if you're, pushing those limits, your tractor is going to struggle. You know, it's, it's either going to sit there and kind of spin if you have way too big of a snow pusher on it, for example, because that's just too heavy on there and the, the volume of snow that's trapped is too big. Or a brush hog, maybe your, your tractor's not even going to pick it up all the way. Maybe you could run the PTO, but it just won't lift it up and the tractor's too light for the amount of weight that's on there and it's just throwing it around. So there's a lot of other variables and it's not always bigger is better. You got to match the equipment to your machine. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it going to help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all-natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not going to corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not going to freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. You know again, so this is kind of a high level look at it, right? Because that's all you can really do. Everybody's circumstances are different. Every machine's different. You know, hydro versus gear drive. You know, what size horsepower you have in the engine compared to the footprint, tires, soil conditions, blah, blah, blah. You know, and, and again, I think it's important to note that while a tiller can do a good job in just one pass, I like 
to do that second pass because it's just like the, the creme de la creme, right? It's just a perfect finish at that point, especially if it was, if it has not been worked up in a long time. And so that second pass, well, double the amount of time saved then at that point. And so that can really, really start to add up. So back to that customer's original question, can a tiller till 20 acres? Well, what's the difference if you're tilling 20 acres in one year versus if you have one acre to till for 20 years or two acres to till for 10 years, right? It's still just a total amount of time and wear that you're putting on the tiller. And how long would you think that a tiller is gonna last when you buy it, right? I mean, for me, honestly, I think that unless you're using it commercially, it's gonna last you as long as you have the tractor, maybe your whole stinking life because that's what these tools are made to do. And if you do wear out a part, whether it's a blade on a box blade, you know, or a tine on a tiller or a, or a blade on a snow pusher or, discs on your disc, teeth for your stump grind, blades for your mowers, tines on your grapple, all sorts of stuff, teeth on your, on your mulcher. All this stuff is made to be replaceable. Those, those parts that are gonna wear out, you can unbolt them on anything that's a quality, right? There's, there's products out there that don't have these replaceable parts and I would encourage you to stay away from that because at that point it becomes a very big hassle to either try to have somebody weld something on or you have to go get a brand new one because you can't replace it. And so that's something that you know, whether you get something through me or through another dealer, get a good feel of what they're selling, right? So when I bring on a new manufacturer, it's because I've already done my due diligence. I know the features that I want. I know a good price point. I know quality. And so I want all of that stuff to work together. And it's my reputation that's on the line. When I sell you something and you get it and you're, you know, you're happy to have it and you want to get to work, I don't want there to be disappointment. I want you to be very pleased with your purchase and so we're happy to help you out we sell all sorts of attachments for tractors for the front end loaders for the three-point hitches go to goodworkstractors.com we sell and ship all over the country and if you did enjoy today's video well we have hundreds more for you to take a look at if you want to see future videos hit that subscribe button right down below i want to thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by and until next time stay safe we'll see you soon